welcome to the Construction Record Podcast. I'm Digital Media Warren Fry, and with me today I have uh, Alec Carrick of uh, Chief Economist Construct Connect, and uh, been doing that for a long time. Long time. Not going to go into how long, but a long time. Fair enough. And and I'm Michael Gukis, Senior Economist, also with the Construct Connect. Uh, and we're going to talk about two topics today, uh, all of them economic, obviously. Uh, one is we have an economic webinar coming up on the 15th, so and both of you are participating, so we're going to have you both describe what you're going to be talking about at that. And then we're going to sort of shift into, we just had a scary holiday, we have a bunch of hopeful holidays coming up, so we're going to talk about what scares you about the economy in the near future and what is you are hopeful about in the near future. But let's start with the webinar. Uh, Alex, how about you tell me what your topic's going to be for this webinar, which is, by the way, called Resources for a World of Economic Uncertainty. Well, uh, the, the you know, there's a lot of uh, questions about where the economy is going because everybody's talking about inflation and, and recession and so on. Although I'm encouraged that the third quarter GDP number, the U.S. was positive at plus 2.6 percent. And and I, I suspect that at some point, I mean, the Bank of Canada is already maybe easing we're giving some indication that it might be easing off interest rate hikes. But uh, I don't think there's any doubt that there's going to be a period of uh, slowdown and, and uncertainty about uh, general economic prospects and, and construction as well, and particularly a shift in construction uh, away from a very strong residential sector. Uh, so that's, that's going to uh, uh, impact a lot of firms. But my major message at the webinar is going to be optimism over the long term, because I don't see how there cannot be huge construction activity uh, out to, well, any time over the next couple of, uh, over the next decade, at least more than that, because the major goal in the world now is to reduce carbon emissions by 2015, zero and that's net zero emissions by 2050, and that has huge implications for for uh, commodity markets and and for labor requirements and a whole range of things. And we're already seeing giant uh, mega projects that are being built. That that's a that's a part of the construction scene right now that I'm not sure people are aware of. Mega projects are huge. There's there's just been any number of really big billion dollar plus projects in the United States that have been going ahead, despite the fact that there's uh, talk of recession and so on. So that's that will be probably what I will be emphasizing. OK, and how about you, Michael? So. Um... Well, you know, it's really hard to follow after Alec because he always does such a great job of nailing mm -hmm. the major um, trends that are out there. I think maybe phrased a little differently, uh, diversity is is sort of the key word I would throw out there. Um, as Alex said, uh, and I fully agree, you know, the residential market has a lot of headwinds facing it. Uh, we're seeing that in mortgage originations, um, depending on how you measure it, it's down by almost half in just the last several months because of rising interest rates. But that doesn't mean that the construction market has no opportunities. In fact, when we look at our data, uh, our, our, our Construct Connect data, and we break it out by major verticals, you know, we can see uh, you know, double digit opportunities in different areas. Uh, some areas within uh, community construction uh, may look very strong in the next several years. Uh, when we think about things like colleges and universities, courthouses, uh, those areas are projected to grow nicely. Civil is another area where there could be a lot of opportunity. And so, uh, you know, the opportunities are out there, but you're going to have to look for them, I think, a little bit harder than than you're used to. And I think that will be a lot of my theme for the uh, the coming up event. Um, it, it's not going to be impossible to grow your business, but you may need to just think about being more flexible as to whom you serve and, and where you're uh, seeking opportunities. 
Okay, and I guess shifting to the other topic, which is uh, what scares you and what are you optimistic about, which you covered a little bit here, but like bigger picture. I know Alex has uh, often described how the war in Ukraine is not just terrible, but it also has cascading effects in the economy. But I'm sure there's other stuff, Alex, you could speak to that is, you know, bad factors that may be on the way or maybe they aren't. Well, yeah, the... Um... And in fact, it's interesting because some of the real heavy hitters, when they're asked what they're concerned about, and I'm thinking specifically of Jamie Dimon, but there's a, he's not the only one. There's been some others. When asked what they're most concerned about now, they, they have shifted away from talk about inflation and recession to geopolitics, which is which is interesting, and the and the areas that they mention are uh, the con the continuing conflict in Ukraine and how that's continuing to disrupt energy and food product markets, and then also what's going on in China with uh, President Xi uh, rising or ascending to absolute total control. So there's going to be more more mm -hmm. back and forth harsh harsh words between the United States and China over Taiwan and the South China Sea. And then the Middle East is is really kind of a uh, quagmire as well, which it always is. But I mean, Saudi Arabia has not come to the plate to help in terms of oil prices. And then there's uh, considerable social unrest in Iran. So mm -hmm. any of these things and and internal politics in the United States uh, may also uh, be a, become an issue. It's, it's not become isn't the right word. It, it's an issue right now. And But I don't think that's really going to knock things off track. I, I just don't see how how the trend can't be towards a great deal more electrification of the economy. And that means huge capital spending on expanding generating capacity. And as I said before, uh, or maybe I didn't say it before. I've said it before on other occasions. Mm -hmm. um, another commodity super cycle because there's going to be this huge demand for copper and nickel and then other things like lithium and, and aluminum and steel and the alloys that go into making aluminum and steel stronger and lighter. So, um, and, and then I've got, I would like to circle back to uh, mm -hmm. some other trends that I see as being quite positive for segments of construction that one might not have thought of before, but uh, I'll save that for later. There's, But there are some areas where things are happening that are going to be quite positive for construction. Okay, and Michael, what, what's scaring you, to put it bluntly? Well, you know, um, scare, I know we're, we're, we're using the word scare because yeah. of the holiday season. I don't want mm -hmm. people to actually think I'm scared, but one of the things that I am uh, very interested in tracking because it has made some all-time lows recently is uh, the U.S. Index of Consumer Sentiment. You know, what mm -hmm. is the mindset of the consumer? Um, you know, one of the things that that I'm sure a lot of us are tracking is, you know, what's happening with the purchasing power of our incomes? Um, yeah, incomes are going up, you know, by some means in, in nominal terms, right? Incomes are going up four or five percent uh, this year. But when you think about the rate of inflation, it, what we're really seeing is an erosion of buying power uh, with that income. And that has really changed minds, especially over the course of this year. Uh, earlier, I think it was in June, the Consumer Sentiment Index hit a level of 50. That is the lowest it has been in its history. And the history goes back, uh, I have it right here in front of me, I think it goes back, 1952 is how far it oh, goes wow. back. So, so the consumer in June uh, had never been more pessimistic. Um, uh, that number has come off there. We're at, at just shy of 60 right now, but a reading of 60 is still well at the bottoms of, of past um, mm -hmm. uh, naders uh, when you look at the, the index. So, you know, that's that's my concern. You know, we need to figure out a way to um, to resolve the inflation issue because that inflation issue is is causing havoc with the consumer. And so, if you can in, if you can fix the inflation issue, then you can hopefully put the consumer back on a much better path. 
And you know, when consumers are on a much better path, uh, then economies very naturally grow. Um, so, so those are the you know that's what I'm really uh, looking at when I think about the, the most troubling parts of the economy right now. Um, but I also you know agree with everything that Alex is saying. You know, every time there's an issue, whether it be with energy or geopolitics, oftentimes there are um, opportunities to to grow, to expand because of those changes, right? And so thinking about energy infrastructure, right? The investments that need to be made there as we, uh, you know, potentially see two global markets for energy, one in which Russia is the source of a lot of that energy and they have their uh, customers. And then there would be a second energy system that is North America, um, Europe, Western mm -hmm. Europe, and then you know other parts of the world maybe africa maybe south america those are harder to figure out maybe right now um, but they all again would require a different uh, supply chain system it would require greater redundancy in this in the energy distribution system than what we have you know as of um, you know february of 2022 and so, you know, with with all these challenging conditions, change does bring opportunities. And we just need to, I think, as good business leaders, we always need to be focused on, on you know, well, OK, I'm in a difficult spot, but where are my opportunities now? Mm -hmm. And Alex, you said you wanted to circle back. So feel free at this point to circle back to things you're optimistic about. <laughs> yeah, well, before the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic came, there were long lists of airport projects, for example, and then nobody traveled during the pandemic. And I wondered, coming out of the uh, the last couple of years that we've been through, are those projects going to go ahead? And and then if, if you think about the big trends that are occurring, well, one of the big trends is the aging of the population. Mm -hmm. And this will sound funny, but the whole baby boom generation, uh, like every baby boomer ever born is now 55 years of age and older. And the mm -hmm. front front end of baby boomers are 75 and so on. And it's, actu it's really true that people have bucket lists. And so there's, and part of that bucket list means travel. So I, I think really uh, subscribe to the idea that there's going to be a, a tremendous demand for travel and airport services and that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. so being aware of the aging population and what, what they are going to want to do and what they will need in terms of medical care and, and so on is something that uh, everybody should be aware of over the longer term. So that's one. So another one is schools. I, I was concerned uh, for the U.S. more than Canada because Canada's still got this population increase. It's very dramatic. But the U.S. hasn't been having a population increase. And, and then people were learning things online and so on. So what's there going to be the demand for... Uh, uh, facilities at the level of higher education campuses, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But there's longer term, there's this trend again where the kinds of jobs are just changing so dramatically because there's a worker shortage. Everybody agrees that there's a worker shortage. And that's tied into the aging population because you know so many older workers are going to be retiring. So people are going to have to be hired in a whole bunch of new areas. Like people are working now in things like artificial intelligence and VR and getting companies set up in the metaverse. I mean, the list of things is just nuts compared to what it used to be. Uh, people are setting other people up to, uh, in terms of getting platforms on the internet, in terms of there's social media influencers, there's, there's um, uh, engineering for electric vehicles. There's there's uh, climate disaster mitigation uh, careers. There's going to be all these new things, and so that's positive for education. So I'm I, I've sort of turned around my thinking about uh, about the prospects for 
for uh, for school facilities and maybe more so at the level of people with their careers and 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 older students. And then a third one is entertainment. Like if you're mm -hmm. talking long term, I can't believe how how huge the entertainment industry has become. Like when I was a kid, the thought of going into entertainment was just not even uh, remotely remotely anything anybody did but mm -hmm. but entertainment is a huge part of the economy now for and particularly for some cities it's uh, uh nashville and atlanta and of course on the on the west coast in the united states and cities in canada as well toronto's huge in it montreal mm -hmm. for uh, french language entertainment and vancouver oh yeah so uh, enter yeah well where yeah where you are warren so mm -hmm. entertainment is big and and there's jobs in that area and and i think there's a there's a project out there i came across the other day that to me sort of epitomized how the economy is changing because there's a new mega project a billion dollar project that's going to be built in new jersey called studio 88 and i and i love this project because it's it's a new new growth area and then it's a studio so it's actually studio construction mm -hmm. sound stages and so on and it's going to be built on the site of a former texaco refinery huh. and it's right along a waterway and the other part of it that's so interesting is that they've got a huge amount of the capital cost devoted towards elevating the project so that there won't be storm damage as a result of uh, uh, precipitation, hurricanes, or whatever, mm -hmm. due to climate change. So it just seems to me like it epitomizes so many things. Okay, Michael, and what about you? So um, one of the things, uh, Alex covers a whole bunch of things, and it gets me thinking, and then I have like four mm -hmm. thoughts in my head, and the question is, okay, well, which one am I going to uh, to lead off with. I think uh, I continue to look at um, productivity uh, output. Uh, one of the things that that is becoming more evident in the data is um, as we continue to try to bring in people who are at the fringes of uh, uh, the labor force, uh, the, the amount of uh, production that these people add uh, it's it's starting to kind of bring down the average a little bit, you know, because again, we're just we're we're scraping, uh, you know, the bottom of the uh, you know labor force barrel if mm -hmm. if we think of it that way, um, and so we've seen challenges. Now those challenges are in part caused, as Alex pointed out, I think, or was alluding to, uh, because we've lost so much of the talent and institu institutional knowledge that was made available. Uh, uh, to you know the economy at large from those baby boomers having worked 30 years or, or more maybe um, in, in you know in their careers uh, so the the percentage of the 55 plus labor force that is still active uh, has not rebounded since covid levels and and I don't think it will uh, for obvious reasons um so you know you're replacing baby boomers with much more green workers, and they're mm -hmm. they're just not able to produce as effectively. Uh, you know now that will change with experience and time, I hope. But but that's a big structural part of the problem uh, mm -hmm. that we're seeing today. So uh, I bring these things up not to discourage us, but to um, to give your listeners uh, to put this thought in your listeners' head, which is. You know, if you're a wholesaler, if you're a products manufacturer, um, you know, who is who is selling products to the trades or to, uh, you know, subcontractors, general contractors, et cetera, how do you create your next product in such a way that it uses less labor uh, to install? Um, how do you create that next product so that it's just simply easier to install, faster to install, um, you know, maybe there's just less technical stuff that has to be known in the background by the installer or the user um, so that it's more, I guess you could say, plug and play ready. Um, I think figuring out how we manage um, 
the, the, the constraints put upon us by the size of the labor force. Um, it's a challenge, but again, it's also an opportunity, right? For for those people who who understand it, you know, um, and understand just uh, you know how scarce high quality labor is and how hard it is to find it. So that's I think that's just one of those those many um, uh, sort of silver linings mm -hmm. that uh, that the the industry needs to consider. Especially within, like I said, especially within the the building products and and trade side, you know. Um, well, the other thing too, of course, comes down to training programs. Um, what are you doing as a business owner to improve the skill set of your employees? Um, having come out of manufacturing before joining Construct Connect, right? I this was a challenge that I heard about all the time from industry leaders. Uh, mm -hmm. Shop owners would tell me, you know. The worst thing that can happen is not for you to train somebody and they leave and go work for your competitor. The worst thing that can happen is you hire somebody, you don't, you do not train them and they stay. Uh, ah. <laughs> those people are the most costly type of person to employ. Uh, not only do they, you know, are they more prone to to have accidents and whatnot but you know they also just have a lower level of productivity and even when things are going well so you know those are some of the the um the thoughts i have about you know where we're going in the future and um what's what should or could be top of mind for some of those really strategic thinking forward-looking uh, leaders in the industry Okay, uh, thanks for joining us again, guys. And uh, if you'd like to attend the, well, you guys already are, but the Construct Connect Fall 2022 economic webcast, the, it is free and is on November 15th, 2022 from 12 to 1.30 p.m. ET. And I will put a register uh, link in the show notes. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Warren. <laughs>